When we think of nature, we often imagine images of lush forests, flowing rivers and majestic mountains. Techno music, on the other hand, is often associated with images of bustling city skylines, flashing lights and pounding beats. But what if we could combine these two seemingly disparate worlds? What if we could create techno music that is inspired by the beauty and tranquility of nature? So, if you're a fan of both nature and techno music, then this video is for you. Let me take you on a journey through the intersection of these two worlds. So, let's get straight into it. How do we combine the two? First, we need to go into nature and capture it. Its sights, its sounds, and the emotions it gives us. This can all be done with an audio recorder, a camera, and a journal. The journal captures your emotions and your thoughts, the photos work well for recalling particular images later in the process, and the audio recorder is perfect for sampling. For example, a park that has grey skies that could mean the threat of rain, so the feeling of tension could be one mood that you could explore. Or maybe there's some birdsong that you captured on your audio recorder, perfect as an ambient bed in your track to give it a sense of space and location. Okay, so these aren't particularly groundbreaking concepts, Everyone's heard of tension in a track before and birdsong is widely used in lots of styles of music. The best way to make what you have captured truly unique is with the journal. The natural world is full of inspiration points and how you interpret the world around you is based on what goes on inside your head. Use this to your advantage and let your mind run free on the paper, capturing and developing any thoughts that come to you, no matter how big or small. Connect different thoughts and begin to build larger concepts based on the natural world around you. Okay, so it's all well and good me talking about this, but how do we actually go about creating a nature-inspired techno project? Let me take you through my own project in which I did exactly that. So I used four locations, three parks around London, Richmond and Gunnersbury Park and Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens. Then I used a private garden in France on holiday as a contrasting location as it's a private space in a rural area rather than a public space in a city. And these are some of the basic ideas that I was able to capture from around 20 to 30 minutes of observation. Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens was dark as I visited the park at night. The place was quite empty and it made me feel a little bit uneasy. The darkness meant I couldn't actually see a lot of nature, but I could see a lot of signs of city life like towers and street lamps. From this, I concluded that the track should have a dark and atmospheric tone, with a minimal approach to the arrangement as there wasn't really a narrative to my visit as the park was quite empty. The audio recording featured the sound of trains and city life, ideal for an ambient bed. As you can see in the project itself, there isn't much arrangement. Most of the sonic interest is happening in the background with the modulation. I did this because this is how my visit to the park was. In front of me, there was very little to note, but in the background with the trains and the city life, that's where the sonic interest was coming from. Also, I've rooted a lot of channels directly into a single reverb. This is to match the washed out images of the street lamps I captured. Rooting them through a single reverb blends all of the sounds together into a much less coherent sound. Contrasting this, Rui Diderot was basking in sun and colours. There was wind and bamboo chimes creating a very tranquil soundtrack, which I used as the basis of the arrangement of the track. Sitting in the garden, it was still very quiet, no outside noise, no reverberations, as most of the garden backed onto empty fields. This meant that the space was very dead, which led me to the idea of using little to no reverb in the track and making it sound quite intimate. Because of the sun and the feeling of being on holiday, I was drawn into the idea of chilling on a beach in Ibiza with some minimal but groovy house tracks in the background with a cold drink in my hand. In the project file, you can see there is virtually no reverb to speak of. All of the percussion is dry and the only sounds with any reverb tails are the chords. The arrangement is also quite minimal. The percussion moves around to give the track a groovy, funky vibe, but other than that, not a lot going on. But once again, this matches what I captured. The garden was very still and calm and I wanted to create the feeling of being on an exotic beach with minimal sounding groovy house music to blend into the background. So then, what did I learn? As I have hopefully demonstrated, this doesn't need to be a hugely complex soul searching endeavour. It can be as simple as going to a park and making some notes on your phone for 10 minutes and observing the world around you. But what I found during this process is that I was able to create music that has a very specific identity because I could see what the music was going to sound like. It was also a great opportunity for a city dweller like me to pay more attention and appreciate the natural world, going to parks and taking notes about the trees and the birds and the sounds around me. It was a very relaxing and calming process and I was able to connect to nature in a new way that I didn't think was possible. And I encourage you to do the same. It doesn't have to be nature. You could go to Canary Wharf in London 
for example, and do the same. The outcome would be very different, but the process would be similar. Go outside and find musical inspiration in the unlikeliest of places. You'll never know what you'll discover.